Well, greetings, folks. Uh, week the King Outlook. Uh, glad to be with you. Still suffering from a little congestion. So uh, I'll try to uh, get through this uh, the best I can. Now, I want to talk. I talked last week about our storms that we go through. And I'm going to talk about today about our need um, to surrender when we feel weak. Now, this is going to seem counterproductive, but hey, it's folks, not. once again, before we get going, if you would like, subscribe, uh, whatever channel you're watching this on. But if you would particularly go to our YouTube channel, the Gate Jacks, the Gate Church of Jacksonville, go there, look for the logo, find it, like and subscribe to that channel, turn on notifications, put a comment in the algorithms, really will help us. We're particularly trying to reach a thousand subscribers on that channel and that you could help us by also sharing with other people. You know, in 34 years of walking with the Lord, there have been times I have been exhausted, felt hopeless, um, weak, didn't feel I had any strength. And the thing that I have learned through that was... I had not surrendered or I'd gotten out of surrender and gotten into my own strength. Instead of leaning into God, I got a little prideful or I just got, you know, my equilibrium got knocked off in the spirit and I realized I was now fighting my own battle, so to speak. And so I just want to be able to talk to you about you know, how to notice this, um, and then how to reconcile it. Well, I think the one thing that you'll notice that when you're feeling weak is your mind isn't focused on God. And um, something that I learned about myself 20 years ago, or so, maybe longer now, I always say 20 years ago, it seems like a long time, but 20 years ago isn't that long anymore. So maybe it's longer than that now, but um, being for me, when I am tired, like exhausted mentally, especially my mind doesn't stay as focused. And so I realize that it's not always warfare. I'm actually attracting warfare in my mind because I did not give myself the rest that my body needed. And so you know, it's, it's when I evaluate that and I catch that, wow, I've been running so hard that I'm just now at a place of exhaustion or temporary exhaustion, not like a nervous breakdown, because I've never had one of those, but just, I'm really tired and I'm not thinking, um, I'm not meditating right. I'm not, it might just mean just to unplug from the world, not from God, but unplugged from the world. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm out of my normal role. I'm out of my, I'm, I'm finding it actually, what happens to me is I find it difficult to read the word. I find it difficult to, when I'm reading the word, to really engage it with my spirit. And it, it's, you would think this is an attack and it's, it might not be. It might be just because I did not, I did not um, protect my body my soul, my spirit, I, my body needs rest at times. Okay. My body needs, um, the ability to regenerate, to, to re-energize. And I love the anointing, but even, you know, that could run out where you're now you're out of the anointing and then you feel the exhaustion. I think a lot of ministers go through this where they run really hard and then they have really bad crashes and they get themselves into all kind of pickles, so to speak. So, what I've learned to do is I have to shut things down and just go, you know what? I'll tell Kathy, you know, I'll just rest. And that's why I try to take a day of rest every week. You know, even when, um, you know, even when I'm on the road, I will rest during the day so that I go into the meeting refreshed because yes, there's the anointing and yes, I mean, God could do all things. And these are all true statements. But I am to steward my body, soul, and my spirit properly. And I find that sometimes I have not, with wisdom, done that. And so I have to, especially like being sick brings this up to me because when I'm sick, 
and I have, especially if I have a head cold, I can't focus. And the thing that I'll do if I can do it is I'll just go, man, I'm going to go sleep. So it's actually a better thing for me than to fill myself up with wanderings. I'll just go get myself. I got to get myself healthy as quick as I can. And um, same thing. So let's say you go through, let's say you go through a traumatic event in your life and you didn't sleep for four or five days. You need rest. You, you need to give your body rest. And, you know, um, I've had them and I've been there for other people. And our first thing we've always tried to do is quiet down the room, quiet down the atmosphere. Let's not talk about the trauma. Let's, let's just have peace. Let's have comfort. Let's bring, you know, we had, we had friends who were in a bad, bad car wreck in, um, God, I think it was 2000 and, uh, we took them all into our home. We were getting ready to go on that, that next day we were going on vacation. Kathy and I canceled our vacation and we had, uh, the, the parents were in one bedroom the daughter was sleeping with my wife. I was sleeping on the couch and Joey wasn't born yet. Joey and Jess were in their rooms and the mother, the grandmother who was our nanny who was in the accident, she was most severely injured was at the hospital. And I would go to the hospital and just, she was unconscious for a while. I would just pray over her and read the word to her. But in our house, what we tried to provide, and I think we did provide, was a place of peace, a place of comfort so that they could heal up because um, I learned something that your body, your spirit is subject to your body at times. You know, your, your mind is subject to the, to rest. If this is, if it wasn't so, they wouldn't do sleep deprivation to torture people, right? They wouldn't do it. So they know, right? Like Hitler knows, you know, the psyops know that sleep deprivation is a way to break down the mind. So I want to give you some signs that maybe you can catch yourself. You just find yourself wandering. Like the energy of the day isn't there like it normally is. Well, take a day if you can or half a day and just go, I'm just going to rest. Read a scripture, read a passage. And just lean back and meditate that and just let the peace of the Lord come over you and bring you rest. Now, you might even fall asleep. You might be sitting in the chair. You might fall asleep for half an hour. You wake up again. Grab the word. Read some more and allow that to happen again. And allow the peace of the Lord to begin to wash over your body and to bring you back into alignment. And then... We could talk about how do we strengthen ourselves for the for the road ahead. We do this and by remembering what God has spoken over us, remembering what God has promised us, remembering the goodness of God. And we begin to strengthen ourselves and feed ourselves. But make no mistake, you can't burn the candle on both ends and not have the whole candle burn out. Matter of fact, it's going to burn out quicker. You must learn how to replenish your body, soul, and spirit. This also goes to diet. Hate to say that word. It goes to what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're doing. Um, these are the things that are necessary for you to go through the storms, to fight them well, to stand and rest in the Lord. Again, what I've found is that when I'm doing that, I've kind of gotten whacked. Sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, I was sick. Like I've had bronchitis. I've had COVID. You know what I didn't try to do with COVID? I didn't try to sit up all night and war. I rebuke you. I, I, I gave myself peace. I rested in the Lord and gave my body the rest it needed while I just sat there and would read a scripture because I couldn't read much. I was really, um, really didn't enjoy COVID. And I would read the scripture and then I would fall asleep. About all you could do with COVID. I was... You know, I was, I was in the bedroom by myself all day because no one else could be near me. And I would just do this and I would rest and I gave myself rest so that my mind could still stay and wage the warfare that it needed to do 
against the onslaught of the lies of the enemy that would come against me. And this is important that you know that. This is why Jesus, you know, people go, why was Jesus sleeping? Because Jesus was at peace. But Jesus also knew how to sleep. <clears throat> I, I think that times, there's times to stay awake and there's times to sleep. And I think that for a lot of people, they burn it because they, they have this sense of duty, which is wonderful. But I remember Chris Vallotton talking about how he wore himself out and had a nervous breakdown. Literally, you know, lost all energy. And he had some other health things going on. I think, number one, I think his testosterone level dropped to zero. <clears throat> and when he discovered that, he discovered, wow, I've got to take care of my body, my soul, and my spirit. I have a right to say No. Not today. By the way, if you study William Branham, John G. Lake, you find that these people felt such a duty is that they wore themselves out. Jack Coe wore himself out. William Branham wore himself out. He'd come off the road for three days. And there'd be all these people in his yard and he would stay and pray for them for four or five, six hours when he really needed rest. And we have to realize that we have the right to get some rest. We do. Otherwise, we're not going to outlive. We might not fulfill our full mission that way. All right. So get the rest of the Lord. This is why he gave. This is why Sabbath was made for man, that man would get his rest. Amen. Amen. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.